everyone. This is Fatma Takaroma with Community Highlights. I'm here with Dr. Yunkala. He is the 2018 presidential candidate of the upcoming elections in Sierra Leone. Hello, how are you doing, Dr. Yunkala? I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me on your program. That's great. I want to know why are you deciding, why now, or that you're deciding to run for president? Well, I believe that I have to give something back to my country and my people, thanks to wonderful education there um, and good upbringing. I was able to come out of the world and make a name for myself and achieve quite a lot. And I feel that it is time to give back. I have been helping, even though I've been out in the diaspora myself for some time. But I chose to go back into politics because I know governance matters. My country is among the poorest countries in the world. It is endowed with a lot of natural resources, just 7 million people. And I don't see any reason why we should not be amongst the most prosperous nations in the world, because God gave us so much. But we've also go gone through many challenges, civil war, recently Ebola, and just three weeks ago, we had a major uh, mudslide that killed over 1,000 people overnight. And a lot of some of what has happened there's always an element where lack of good governance contributed to the disaster or the condition of the country. And I believe I can change that. Wonderful. We just heard a speech from you. You talked, you had a very good speech talking about the things that are going on in Sierra Leone currently with the present administration or even going back to 20, 30, 40, 56 years since the country has started. Uh, I know that you've been affiliated with the SLPP. Was that was this your first choice? I know this is your father's. Uh, he basically was the original member. They helped found this organization. And um, was this was this your first choice? And why did you decide to originally start with them, or or did you go first seek any other political party? Well, I, I joined the SLPP. Um, that is the tradition I grew up in. My father and the other founding members had high core values, strong core values for that party, belief in the rule of law, belief in inclusiveness, justice. Um, and so I, I felt that I should go back there because of those core values. But what I have seen over the past two years, probably a little longer, I thought I could change from within. It just, they resist change. And there is a, I, I, I still love the party. But I am totally, totally opposed to the leadership. The way the leadership, now there's a lot of violence in the party, no respect for women, um, corrupt practices everywhere. I cannot believe a party can be that corrupt and then try to uh, change my nation. So I chose to leave them this week. So this has been in the works or this is, do, do you just decided to come out currently to do this? Well, what you know is in politics, uh, things evolve. It's not just one incident. It's an accumulation. I had joined others before to try to get constitutionality, respect for the constitution within the party, a level playing field, and people just don't want that. And, um, and when I see what is going on now, time is running out, and there's the urgency of now. Our nation is suffering. Poverty is deepening, over 70% of that population is in extreme poverty. Ebola decimated the country. I, I just believe that we cannot be playing kitchen politics in a party as to who is more dominant. What is important is the need to move out and create a new platform for Sierra Leoneans, progressives to have a free, free expression of their political interests. And then we compete to change the nation, convince the young generation that they ought to be better and they must be better. They must be as good as kids in, in, in Ghana, in Rwanda, in other African countries where we've seen change and progress. What I see now worries me in Sierra Leone, and I think because of the urgency of now, six months before the election, that I chose to, to, to have separate ways with my father's uh, uh, SLPP. I know that you have an extensive United Nations background, top positions there. How does that come in your expertise in the United Nations and your experiences? How does that come into play with your this campaign or you, you being president or your governance? I believe that has enriched me a lot. Uh, I spent almost 20 years in the UN tackling a lot of issues on sustainable development, energy access, climate change issues. 
Uh, my profession itself is agriculture. Uh, I did quite a bit of work in agribusiness with colleagues, industrialization, structural change, all of that knowledge I believe I can bring home, but also the global network uh, of friends and goodwill that one has. No nation can develop on its own now, especially poor countries. You need strategic partnerships. I believe I bring those assets back and a lot of knowledge base. I worked quite extensively with Asian countries, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Vietnam. We had programs in all of those countries and I've seen them transform in 20, 25 years, 30 years. I've seen where they've come from. That even gave me the courage that we are not condemned or doomed to be poor and be basket cases, that in fact a transformation is possible and because there are best practices we can copy from others. This is, this is the age of the knowledge economy. So I believe that I can bring all of that home to help my people lift seven million people out of poverty using the natural capital that God gave us, iron ore, titanium, uh, uh, rare earth metals like tantalite and others, diamonds, gold, fisheries, abundant uh, uh, arable land, yet, yet we're amongst the poorest of the poor. That has to change and you need new ideas. Considering we all know some of the things going on with this administration, such as the Ebola and the mudslide and how it's handled, can you please tell us what will you do different? What can you bring to the table? What can you, what change can you make? I know you said some of that, but can you elaborate a little bit into what change can you make? How will you be different? Well, first of all, we got to fight corruption. Part of what is killing poor African countries um, is corruption. There's a lot of leakage in the system. Once the corruption is endemic, um, no long-term planning holds because everybody is focusing on the short term. Who can, who can grab as much money as they can to, for personal aggrandizement? That has to change, so we must fight corruption. That means that, yes, there must be a lot of personal integrity, a new brand of leadership that will give people confidence that you can do your honest labor and you can still live well. Second, we have to diversify the economy. Um, one of the things that has happened with us is we focused on just a handful of minerals and once immediately commodity prices plunge like happened to iron ore over the last three years um, over a 50 percent decline in value our whole economy just went into shock so we have to diversify and giving our geographic location I believe that some degree of light manufacturing uh, can be done uh, agribusiness can be developed um, thirdly, we have to invest heavily in the social sector, education and health. Fourth, we have to look at vulnerable groups, the youth. We have almost 60% youth unemployment rate. We have a lot of young girls, high teenage pregnancy. Uh, we also have to invest in healthcare. Uh, those are top priorities for me, but of course, infrastructure and energy to enhance systemic competitiveness of the economy. So I just knocked out about five top priorities that I would have, but of course, that cannot happen without the right team of expertise, without good international goodwill, but also helping the people themselves believe, especially the young generation. They have to believe that they can change them, their, their lives. About 60% uh, of that population is below 30. Yes, and 70%, I think around 67% of Sierra Leone's population are youths. So do you have any inf infrastructure in place or any to engage them because you just came out with your your presidency and your movement so do you have any structures in place to engage the youth yes we we are setting up a very strong uh, youth uh, management team i don't want to talk about the party now because i still have this two three week window where i'm not allowed to engage in public activities for the party until we receive that certificate but what i can safely say the party that I am part of now, the, the chairman of the party himself was a youth minister before. And in addition, he's worked in Ghana almost 10 years, leading social development programs for international NGOs. So he comes with an expertise that is unique. And yes, his priority is the youth. They are the future, but also that's the demographic dividend we have to capitalize on to move into light manufacturing. But we have to empower them with skills. We have to introduce them to entrepreneurship and institutional support, financing uh, facilities so that they can become their own businessmen, job creators rather than job seekers. Okay. Any last words? Well, just pray for me that I succeed, that I help to lead my people to a greater life. 
thank you very much for your time. Uh, again, this is Fatmata Karoma with Community Highlights, and this is Dr. Kanda Yunkala, and I wish you all success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. <laughs>